Good morning. Hey everybody. I hope you guys are having a really awesome Wednesday. Today I am going to take you through a keto day of eating. This is a reboot week for us. So that means that we have started back to keto as of Monday and we're basically just kind of getting back into the swing of things. We had taken some time off because I was super sick and here's an update for you. How about both of my little boys have double ear infections right now? Yeah, they both are on antibiotic, they both went to the doctor. We are just really bogged down with sickness. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to cook and I'm going to clean and I'm going to get my life together so that we can try and defunk the house of whatever germs are causing all of us to get ill. Dan has a cold too. Seriously, like we are all still sick. Like it's just been absolutely crazy. And I really, really hope that this is the last of it and that by the weekend, everyone will be feeling tip top. So to start my day, I did have a cup of black coffee, um, but now I'm making a cup of butter toffee bulletproof coffee and it's gonna be delicious. So I'm gonna show you how I make that and then I'm gonna figure out what the heck we're eating today. I'll show you whatever I eat for like snacks. I'm probably going to do a like tuna melt thing for lunch. A lot of really delicious, awesome things going on. So come with me, enjoy the day. I hope you guys are really awesome, truly having like an awesome day. I feel really motivated today and I feel re-energized. So the Bulletproof Coffee is probably gonna make me a freaking spaz, shall we? Okay, ingredients for Bulletproof Coffee. I am doing this Nutraholics MCT oil powder instead of my regular coconut oil because I'm really, really liking this. I will leave the link down below, this stuff is awesome. I am using Butter Toffee Skinny Syrups. I absolutely love these skinny syrups. They are so sweet and totally taste like sugar to me. They come in nine bazillion flavors. I got this one at Burlington of all places, but I've seen them at TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Bell's Outlet, and you can definitely order them on Amazon. And then I'm going to be doing some Kerrygold butter unsalted and a steaming cup of black coffee. So let me show you what goes in and tell you the amounts and then I will get myself supercharged. Okay, so into my Ninja Bullet cup, I'm putting a teaspoon of Kerrygold butter. I'm doing a cup of plain coffee. I'm such a cheap date when it comes to coffee. I like like the cheapest on sale ground basic coffee there is. I never get fancy with my coffee unless I'm having it at someone else's house. So then I'm gonna put in about a half a scoop, it comes with a scoop, of uh, the MCT oil powder. So half a scoop of that. You really wanna work up to a full scoop with MCT oil powder because if you use too much like Dan did, you will get the shits and you're welcome for that. Next, our skinny syrup. I do about a teaspoon, give or take a splash. If you like it really sweet, you could do a tablespoon of this, but I find that a teaspoon is really good enough. So that's it. Now I'm gonna blend it on high for about 15 seconds and I am going to be in heaven. 15 seconds and look at that magic happening. Ooh. All right, down the hatch. Oh, it's delicious. I definitely could have added a little bit more of the skinny syrup. I did a teaspoon. Next time I'll probably do the full tablespoon, but it's still delicious. And this is going to sustain me until lunchtime, which probably won't even be until around like one or two o'clock. Stay magical. See you in a bit. Okay, I'm getting a jump on dinner because I think if I do something in the crock pot that will kind of help me stay motivated to clean all day because I won't have like dinner looming in the balance. So tonight we are going to be doing the um, Mississippi Chuck Roast. You guys have seen me make this a couple of times. It's one of my go-to super easy, like keto friendly, 
keto for dum dum recipes because you literally just throw a handful of ingredients in the crock pot and forget about it all day. I'm also going to be making fat kid cauliflower casserole. So that's kind of going to be the star of the show. Dan was saying that he was craving this, so I'm actually going to surprise him and he'll be super stoked about dinner. So let me quickly show you what goes into this and then I will show you, um, what will I show you? I'll show you how it all comes together later on when I make the cauliflower casserole. I just don't want to forget to show you like the steps to making this. Okay? Okay. You need a beast ass chuck roast. This thing is massive. It was on sale at Aldi. This giant piece of meat was only 10 bucks. Salt and pepper, a jar of banana peppers, packet of ranch dressing, stick of butter. Doesn't get any easier. Okay, so crock pot goes on low. Then you put in your big old chuck roast. You're gonna salt and pepper both sides. Not too much salt because there's a good amount in the banana peppers and also in the ranch dressing, but you definitely want a good amount of pepper. We love pepper, so we never skimp on it. If you're someone who isn't crazy about black pepper, just take it easy, but don't omit it. It really does add a nice flavor. Pepper. Next goes in a packet of dry ranch seasoning. We get the Aldi brand, but we've also done Hidden Valley and that was really good. So ranch packet in. an entire jar, juice and all, of banana peppers. Oh, it smells so good. Whew. Okay, and last but not least, I'm going to add a stick of butter. That's right, a whole stick. It's a lot of meat, don't you judge me. Lid on, this will cook for eight to 10 hours. Okay, so that's it. That bad boy is gonna cook for eight to 10 hours on low, and it's gonna be absolutely mouthwatering when it is done. I already can't wait to eat it. And like I said, I have shown this before, uh, but if you're new here and you've never seen it, you're welcome. This is such a crowd pleaser. Even if you have, you know, family members or people that are not eating keto or not eating low carb, you could serve this with like those little Hawaiian rolls or something, and it would be like the best, like, French dip of your life. So <laughs> trigger warning, <laughs> it's really good with bread. Um, this is uh, Dan's absolute most favorite, favorite, favorite meal. And since he's feeling a little bit under the weather, I wanted to make sure that I had something really like satisfying and awesome for him to eat. So here's a cleaning pro tip for you from my dearly beloved, now deceased grandmother. When she would start cleaning the house, she would fill the sink with hot water and put pine salt in it. Do you know why she did this? Because smelling the pine salt and the smell of cleanliness helped her stay motivated. And if she didn't get to everything that she wanted to get to, <laughs> it runs in the family. Um, the whole house smells like pine salt. Bam. Like I haven't cleaned a thing, but my house smells clean. What? You're welcome. Okay guys, it's lunchtime. So I am going to make a tuna melt with my absolute favorite low carb wraps. I'm really hot on these right now. I just love them. So this is the brand, Carb Counter Wraps. They're five net carbs a piece. We'll use one of these wraps. I have a can of tuna with a tablespoon of mayo and a little bit of dill relish, two slices of provolone cheese, some red onion, a tiny bit of butter to fry up the tortilla and I'm going to end up dunking this in a little bit of spicy ranch. Just find the most jacked up frying pan that you have, like I did. Then put it on medium heat, add a little bit of butter and once that's nice and bubbly you're gonna throw in the tortilla. Next, put in the tortilla and let it soak up a little bit of that butter. Then flip it to the other side. Again, this is right around medium heat. Then I'm going to add two slices of provolone cheese. Use whatever cheese you have on hand. 
Once you start to see the cheese begin to melt a little bit, go ahead and add the red onion. You could skip the onion if you're not a fan, but I think it gives it like a true tuna melt taste. Oh, I love onion. Next, add the tuna. Okay, once you add the tuna, you're gonna wanna carefully pick up the tortilla and fold it in half. Once you know it's nice and brown on one side, go ahead and flip it. I'm gonna let it brown a little bit on the other side and then I'm gonna cut this in half and lunch will be done. Look at that cheese. Yum. Okay guys, so here is my lunch. Dill pickle tuna melt with provolone cheese and a tablespoon of spicy ranch dressing and a Sprite Zero because I absolutely love it. Easy peasy. Okay, it's like 4.30, so it's time for a snack. I'm going to do one of these little snack packs. These are my favorite. It comes with a little beef stick and a little cheese stick. I actually get them by the box at Walmart. They're on Amazon too. It's only one carb for one package. This is my go-to snack. Okay guys, we are in the last hour of the meat cooking. So before we spatulate it, I'm gonna go ahead and get rolling on the side dish. So I'm doing Fat Kid Cauliflower, which is basically like a loaded cauliflower casserole. I've made a really plain version on here before, but this one's a little bit jazzed up because it has cooked onions and bacon, and it's going to be freaking delicious. Let me show you what you need. First, you need a buttered eight by eight pan. I'm using parchment paper because the last time I made it in this pan, it stuck a little bit. So I'm just kind of taking extra precautions. Then uh, two bags of riced cauliflower. I normally would use two plain, but I'm using what I have on hand. So it's one plain and one with garlic and herb seasoning. You need a half a cup of sour cream, a half a block of cream cheese, some salt and pepper, a little onion powder, a little seasoned salt, six pieces of bacon cooked and chopped, about a cup of shredded cheese. I have a mixture of uh, Monterey Jack and cheddar here. And then I also fried up one yellow onion. So hopefully you got cauliflower <coughs> rice that steams in a bag. I again did not. I know there is a way to probably do it in the microwave, but I just don't. So my cauliflower rice has to be cooked on the stovetop in a pan without fail. Every time I open a bag of cauliflower rice, this happens. It's like a cauliflower landmine that exploded everywhere. Why? Why? Well, that's exactly what I felt like doing. Just kidding, it's not. Okay, so cook your cauliflower to the package directions and make sure that it's cooked all the way through. Also, go ahead and set your oven for around 350. Once the cauliflower is cooked and you've removed as much of the moisture as you possibly can, you're ready to add the ingredients. I typically just steam it with the lid on and wait until all of the moisture is absorbed. Okay. So then, add the onions. That's one cooked medium yellow onion. Next, we're going to add the seasonings. That is a quarter teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of pepper, an eighth a teaspoon of seasoned salt, and an eighth a teaspoon of onion powder. Then, you're going to add four ounces of cream cheese, which is half a block, and then you are going to add the half a cup of sour cream. Heat down to low, and now I'm going to mix this together until it's absolutely all incorporated. Okay, once you've got it all mixed together, give it a little taste to see if you need to add any additional salt and pepper or seasonings because you definitely want to kind of tweak that to your own taste buds. Now we're going to go ahead and put this into the buttered 8x8 pan. Okay, once you get it all transferred into the 8x8 dish, Use a rubber spatula to pat it down nice and tight. 
This ends up coming out the texture of like a hash brown casserole. So you can imagine how many different twists you could do on this. It would be really good with like ham and I don't know. There's just a million different ways to do it. So pat that down. And then we are going to add the shredded cheese and the bacon to the top. I don't have a whole lot of rhyme or reason to how I do this. I typically will add a little bit of cheese. A lot of bit of cheese, really. This is definitely, definitely a high fat side dish. A little goes a long way though. Then I'm gonna add about half the bacon. Then the rest of the cheese and the rest of the bacon. Now it's gonna go into a 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes. Okay, so while the cauliflower is in the oven baking, go ahead and turn the crock pot down to warm and go ahead and chop up all this meat. What I like to do is like the last half an hour to 60 minutes that I know this meat is gonna hang out in here, I like to go ahead and chop it up and let it sit and soak in all of the juice. It just makes it really, really tender and then it's like this beautiful, like, I don't know, like soupy beef. I can't even explain this. If you've never tried it, go for it. It's absolutely delicious. Spatulator! Spatulate! Oh god, don't spatulate hard. You'll burn yourself. Oh god. I am here to tell you that this would make a mind-blowing holiday side dish. So if you're trying to think of like a keto side dish to bring to your family's Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner, this would really um this would really set set everyone's minds ablaze it smells incredible okay so we always just use like a slotted spoon and drain off a little bit of the juice and serve it in a bowl you want some of the juice because it's delicious but you don't want it drowning and this is just the best method we've found so far mm. all right here it is plated I'm pretty impressed with myself. Is that weird to say? Yo, look at that meat. Okay guys, I'm gonna go eat my dinner and hang out with my sick fellas. I just wanted to try the cauliflower for you really quick because I made it a little different. Super indulgent. It's a really rich, delicious side dish. I stand by the fact that it would be awesome as a holiday side dish, so make it. Have a great night, guys. Just a quick bonus. Look how awesome this meal preps. That's three more complete servings and an extra cauliflower. And yes. bacon. Oh, yeah, and bacon. Sweet.